think it depends. So uh, we have been using classical Chinese as if it is one homogeneous uh, group. It is not. Um, just as um, you know, each language has its chronological development. So classical Chinese, if we speak more specifically, um, you have the late imperial, we call the late imperial, basically Mingqing, that will be 16th century onward until um, the 20th century. Um, is closer to what we call the Mingqing vernaculars, and that they are closer to um, what we use modern Chinese today. So it will be a lot easier if you read um, these Mingqing stories, these Mingqing novels that are written in these kind of vernacular. Um, and uh, as I said, that uh, the medieval, the middle Chinese, that um, the, for instance, Tang China was very famous of its poetry. That's why we, as a child, we were exposed first to Tang poetry. And they um, also, um, to, to a lesser degree, it, it, but it's still, I think if you're fluent in modern Chinese, you will be able to um, figure it out relatively easy. But then we'll come to uh, archaic Chinese. Um, that the end of the first millennium, it's still, if you're fluent in modern Chinese, that you should be able to understand, I think, probably 50 to 60%, my estimation. But if we're talking about texts coming from the beginning of the first millennium BCE, I would say even if you are a native speaker um, and you have you are a very uh, you know relatively educated person, you will have a very hard time reading texts from that era without learning classical Chinese.